ready for a Dahlia video here. That'll be coming later this week. All my plants that are field ready. Let's get caught up on some things around the field here quick before we head down and start chores. A whole bunch of different patches of daffodils. These guys are almost ready. Gooseneck is when you want to pick them. Good morning. I'm headed down to check on everything. Yesterday we were in the high 60s. Today we're going to be in the 70s. Uh, getting warmer and warmer throughout the week. 83 by the end of the week and then we're going to drop down to 50s. Spring is typically like this around here in southern Wisconsin. We're zone 5A. Just south of the capital city Madison in a town called Verona. Um, it happens every year. We get super excited. The sun comes out. It gets really warm. Things <laughs> start to grow really, really fast, and then it gets cold again. Last week, we had this tunnel covered with plastic because it got down to 19 degrees. We had thunderstorms the next following days, hail possibilities, tornado possibilities, uh, winds ripping at up to 80 miles per hour, and we're gonna be 80 degrees by Friday. So in 10 days, it's just kind of been every type of weather you could think about here. So I was really hoping to avoid this, or at least delay this until later into the season. We were supposed to get scattered showers last night, and um, I think we did, but we were not part of that scatter. So <laughs> garden is super dry. It is so dreadful and I hate doing it. Um, and that is watering. So with the between the wind and the temperatures increasing, we're gonna have to water today. The good thing is that our soil is heavy clay. So once we water, the plants should be good until we cool back down to the 50s this weekend. Um, all of my seedlings are now needing to be watered, the ones up by the house, needing to be watered every single day, multiple times a day sometimes, just to keep them going. However, watering by hand is one of the most tedious things <laughs> known to man. I, I just don't like it. And John was the one who did it last year for me. We only had to do it about a handful of times last year, but still we have to connect three hoses, 300 foot hoses together uh, to bring it all the way down to the garden. And even when we do that, it barely reaches. And then it's just a bunch of dragging up and down because we have to take it off every week in order to mow. And it's just kind of a pain. But the upside is we're not gonna be putting in irrigation. We talked about this very briefly, John and I, but we decided that it just wasn't worth our time this year. We're gonna get one of those like fan watering things so that we can turn it on and just let it go for, I don't know, whatever, a while. I was just done fiddling with the irrigation. So this Sunday I pulled it all up because we had left it out from last year and I put it away and I just don't wanna look at it this season. There were so many bits, so many pieces. There's such a huge learning curve to putting in irrigation. We had only put two lines down each bed before realizing that we probably needed four lines per bed and it was just a mess. So we didn't end up really turning it on last year. Uh, when we did, I feel like you had to babysit it and be down here and see if there's any holes. And there was a hole last year and we had to take up all the landscape fabric, fabric and it was just like a pain in the neck. And I just didn't want to deal with that this year. Like I rather, since we're going to have to drag the hose down anyways to connect it to the main water tubing with the irrigation, we figured if we're going to have to drag it down here anyways, we might as well just put it on um, one of those watering fan thingies and just leave it <laughs> and I think I will be much happier with that this year. I know that it's going to get water on the leaves. I know that that's going to increase the chance of powdery mildew which I did not experience at all last year um, but I'm hoping that we get enough rain in between the soil holding a lot of water. I won't have to water that often anyways. So yeah that's the plan. I do have to get down here and do that and it takes about an hour. I'm also going to try to rototill this space. Nine beds worth. It's kind of a lot of space but just the beginning of our scaling up for 2023. I don't even know that sounds like mania right now. Now. Anyways, I'm going to try to work on that and get the landscape fabric down. There are seeds that I want to direct sow and then there's also obviously all of my trays full of seedlings that are just like dying to get out. Even being fed every week, they are unhappy. They are starting to get incredibly root bound and it has happened again. I think I had fungus gnats. Roots are just they're thin or brown and they just aren't white and bright and thriving like they should be. So I need to get them in the ground to so rejuvenate and reboot and live their best life down here. So these are the anemone and actually it feels kind of wet. Maybe we did get some rain. Oh, something's eating these. And see that? That's a 45 degree cut. That's probably a bunny. They get in there. 
they definitely get in there and the babies are able to like sneak under this like little tiny uh, crack in the fence over here. But I can see some growth coming back in the center here. Kind of the outer bigger leaves are yellowing, but I think that's just between the really cool temperatures and then the really warm temperatures. I think they're just losing their minds. So, ooh, look at that though, that looks great. So I'm kind of freaking out about the tulips and I don't know why, I have it in my head that they're like not gonna produce buds or something. I don't know why, that seems irrational. I mean, out of 2,500, you would think something has to come up and I'm sure they will. I really want them to be ready by Mother's Day so that I can bring them to the market. I got into the Verona market. Update, hello, I forgot to tell you. I got into the Verona market and I am applying for the Fitchburg market. A little bit bigger, a little bit more heavy duty. I had to get like a business ID. So it's been on my list, but I was kind of nervous to do it, but it was only 20 bucks and hopefully I get into that market. I'm gonna try for a third one. I know that's insane, but there's three completely different markets. So the Verona market is small and it has less foot traffic. However, it's great exposure to this community because there's a lot of young couples, there's a lot of weddings that happen here, uh, there's a lot of people with disposable income. So I really want people to have exposure to our business and our flowers and see what we're all about and just think of us kind of when they're making those arrangements for wedding, uh, baby showers or whatever. The second market has a lot of foot traffic and people really, really like local. They really support farmers and growers and there is nobody selling flowers at that. Well, there are people who do vegetables with some flowers, but there's nobody who is selling exclusively specialty cut flowers. So I think that's a great market to get into. The third market down in New Glarus, and these all happen like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I would do my flower stand on Saturday and Sunday. So it's actually really perfect, maybe. It sounds perfect, uh, but the last market in New Glarus is actually a tourist like destination place, and I think it would be interesting to see what that market uh, is like. So anyways, that's my plan for uh, market this year. <sighs> Can you tell I'm procrastinating? <laughs> I really gotta get up. I'm gonna water these just a bit. You feel really wet, so that is like a great thing. I think the tulips actually need a little bit more water though. I'm not really sure what to do with them. So far, I've just let them do their own thing, but never done this on this scale. There's about 2,500 here. They're looking really, really great. I don't see any bud development inside yet. I just don't know if I need to water them. It's such heavy clay. I'm worried about pulling them. Anyways, we'll take it day by day. Something is coming in and just like pulling these out. Some of these don't look like they're gonna make it, but... I hope they survive. I just don't know what's going on here. Some of them look like really good and amazing, and other ones just have had such a bad day. Here's another spot where something's been pulled out. I just don't get it. I don't get it. So as a brief update, um, we were, oh man, this is the worst. We were able to get our house rented. So right now I am using the water from the house because we're gonna be paying that next bill. But otherwise we'll be coming down this shared path that goes up to where we're renting right here and we'll use that water. And I think it's just a little bit farther. The spigot is on the side or front of the house. Another 100 foot hose. <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful life of flower farming. Oh, but it's so good. It's so good to get out. Oh my gosh, we have so much crap in our yard. I think I've forgotten how to do this <laughs> effectively and efficiently, but that's okay. We're gonna get it done. <sighs> good grief. Okay, here we go. We're almost there. One more. Where this is like the only hill <laughs> that I get like winded walking up and down. It's very weird. It's actually a lot steeper than it looks in the videos. Here's the pile of irrigation that we're not going to be using. I will show you how we wrapped it up. Not that stuff. We wrapped some of it up and we just like taped every 70 foot piece and then we put tape another one. So it should be easy to get off if we decide to ever use that again. But this is what it looks like before that. Okay, one more hose and then we'll get these ranunculus water and we'll complete that task for the day. That's the biggest task. Laying that fabric is next. And then of course doing the dahlia cuttings and getting the seedlings in, duh, I need to do that. I think I'll probably wait though till the weekend because uh, it won't be super, super hot. It's just gonna be a scorcher and I just don't think that the seedlings will transplant all that well if we just pop them in. So today is not the day to forego sunglasses and I can totally hear all the water just seeping out of every connection point.
I don't know if any of you out there can relate to this, but for me, watering is like the trickiest thing. Sometimes I'll let my things get too dry and then they die, or I overwater them and then they also die. Out of all the things flower farming, that has proven the most challenging thing to do is figuring out good watering schedules. If anyone has any tips and tricks, please put them in the comments on watering. It is, it's just so hard for me. If you know what you're doing, tell me, please. <laughs> I'm in desperate need. Oh, so I'm gonna be honest, I'm like <laughs> disturbed at the number of plants that have been like ripped out. Well, that chore is done. Um, overwhelm does not even begin to describe the amount of work that has yet to be done, but I'm not gonna think about that. I'm just gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other and whatever gets done, done, gets done and whatever doesn't, doesn't. And I heard there was a quote somewhere, something about when you're first starting out learning something, strive for B minus quality, but consistency. And so that's what I'm gonna do, B minus quality. And as time goes on, that B minus quality, the standard for that goes up and up and your work improves. So I'm just gonna focus on consistency, just doing what I can, B minus standard, but doing it every day. I think that is the key for long-term success. So anyways, I'm gonna leave you here. Thank you so much for coming along with me on some of my morning chores and allowing me to chat with you. This is probably the format that I'm gonna use moving forward just because of how busy we are. The vlog style is a lot easier to edit. There's not so much B-roll and it's just a little bit more casual feel, so. Anyways, if you like that format, let me know. If not, sorry, <laughs> maybe later in the season or when I get more accustomed to what I'm doing, I'll have more time to edit my videos. But until then, this is probably how I'll come to you and share our story. So thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.